Hello and welcome to this instructional video on airway management. By the end of this video you should be able to recognise an at-risk airway, correctly administer oxygen, use basic manoeuvres to open an airway, safely use airway adjuncts and be able to correctly use a bag valve mask. This video is based on a clinical scenario, however we will pause at key points to give further guidance. If the patient is vomiting, you should roll them onto their side to reduce the risk of aspiration. Can I have a suction? Yeah. Thank you. Here we go. Thanks. This is the anchor sucker. This is used to clear excess vomit and secretions from the mouth. You should only ever attempt to clear secretions which you can see and never insert the instrument further than the pen. When assessing the airway, you may hear added noises. Noises that may be heard are stridor, wheeze, gurgling and snoring. It is important to note that in complete airway obstruction, there will be no audible breath sounds. Can I have my nose water? Have you opened your mouth for me? Okay. 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 To remove a foreign body, you can use McGill's forceps. Do not attempt to remove a foreign body unless it's fully visible. Ivy, you've just been a bit sick, okay? But don't worry, we're just gonna go get some help. See, I'm quite worried about her. Can you call the perp team? Yeah. Hello, this is an SBAR call. Um, my name is Deepa Patel, I'm a medical student and I'm in A&E. Um, I'm calling regarding Ivy Jew, who's 23 years old um, and the doctor is wor worried about decreasing conscious levels. Um, she was admitted with um, query overdose um, and has vomited. This is an example of the SBAR handover method, a tool used across trusts as a standard handover format. It stands for situation, background, assessment and recommendation. You should be familiar with this as it is the format expected when handing over patients. Okay, so you'll come and assess the patient as soon as you can? That's great, thank you. I'll let the doctor know. Now that you have assessed the airway, you can move on to assess breathing, following the Dr. A, B, C, D, E approach. Perks, you will be on shortly. Okay, that's good. Um, her level of consciousness has decreased. Can you get another set of arms? Yes, do. Snoring may suggest a partial airway obstruction. In this patient, a head tilt chin lift manoeuvre can be performed, as there is no suspicion of a C spine injury. Ivy, I'm just going to move your head a little bit, okay? To perform a head tilt chin lift, bring the head into the central position. Place one hand on the forehead and tilt the head back. At the same time, place your fingertips under the chin and lift upwards. If you suspect a C-spine injury, you should use a jaw thrust. To do this, place the fingers of both hands behind the angle of the mandible and displace the jaw forward. The head tilt chin lift manoeuvre will open the airway. However, to maintain airway patency, an airway adjunct should be used. Now the nasopharyngeal airway. This is a nasopharyngeal airway, or an NPA. One end is flared to limit the depth of insertion. You can also use a safety pin to prevent loss of the airway down the nose. The other end is bevelled for ease of insertion. MPAs are sized in millimetres according to their internal diameter. The length increases with diameter. 
Choose the correct diameter based on the size of the larger nostril. The sizes used in adults are 6 to 8 millimetres. Lubricate the MPA before inserting. While inserting, use a gentle twisting motion and aim straight backwards. An important thing to note is that you should not use an MPA if a basal skull fracture is suspected. Signs to suggest this would be CSF leakage from the ears or nose, raccoon eyes or battle sign. This is an oral pharyngeal airway, also known as a Goodell airway. It fits between the tongue and the hard palate. It should only be used in unconscious patients, otherwise it will stimulate a gag reflex. All pharyngeal airways are available in various sizes. The correct size is determined by measuring the distance from the incisors to the angle of the mandible. To insert, introduce the airway in the upside down position and rotate 180 degrees as it passes the hard palate. This minimises the risk of further obstructing the airway with the tongue. Correct placement will be demonstrated by the flattened section sitting in between the patient's teeth. Okay, the airway seems pated now, but it looks like the taps are dropping. Can you pass me the non rebreather? Ivy, I'm just putting an oxygen mask on. Our patients' oxygen saturations are 87% on room air. For this reason, an oxygen mask with reservoir bag using a flow rate of 15 litres per minute is most appropriate. In patients who are not critically ill or are carbon dioxide retainers, a venturi mask is more appropriate. A low concentration venturi valve should be selected first and then titrated upwards to achieve desired oxygen saturations. These are 94 to 98% for most patients or 88 to 92% for carbon dioxide retainers. These are the different valves. They are colour coded. Attach the valve to the oxygen mask and then attach this to the oxygen tubing. Now that you have secured the airway, you can continue with your Dr. A, B, C, D, E approach. Okay, can you take another set of ops for me? I'm just going to go put a timer in. Her mask has stopped misting? The mask has now stopped misting. This suggests that the patient is no longer breathing. You should now recheck for a response. Ivy, can you hear me Ivy? Open your eyes. As there is no response, you should open the mouth and check for obstructions. Then, you should check for signs of life for up to 10 seconds. She's not breathing but there's a faint pulse. Can you pass me the bag mouth mask? I'm here to help. Is there anything you want me to do? Too? There's been an arrest. Can you call 2222 and bring the crash car? Sure thing. This is the bag valve mask, the most common device used to ventilate patients not breathing or breathing inadequately. It is a self-inflating bag with a one-way valve and can be connected to a face mask, an LMA or an endotracheal tube. On its own, the bag valve system ventilates patients on room air only but can be connected to oxygen supply for higher concentrations of oxygen. You should form a seal around the nose and mouth by performing a jaw thrust with your middle ring and little fingers and pressing down on the mask with your thumbs and index fingers. An assistant should squeeze the bag for you. Continue ventilating the patient and reassessing for signs of life until help arrives.